So Welcome. This is Noelle, and we are talking about tanking today. Tanking? Don't call it that. That's no. <laughs> what even is that? Tanking. It's fish. It's, fish tanking. No. no. I think it should be a trend. It should not be a trend. It's terrible. It's not terrible. It's like old people terms. Okay. There's the tank. Yeah, yeah. that's the tank that I set up, and then mom modified. It wasn't significantly. Yeah, it wasn't what I wanted it to be because she just sort of Yeah. Mom is me. Yeah. She moved things and then didn't do things. But mom loves it. And yeah. we learned through that. So yeah. some of the things that we learned is my refusal to sterilize Oh. things yeah. may have been an advantage. Oh, I don't know if I say that really, but... Okay, well, we're having this conversation about it, so that's... Okay, uh, well... what When you're new to tanking, everybody's like... All right. Everybody's like what? You have to... Oh, yeah. In my Facebook groups, when I'm... I'm not, like, I don't want to leave the groups because they're, like, some people have really cool tanks, but I am a low-tech tank person, so anything, I mean, I might talk about high-tech tanks because I used to have one, like, years and years ago, but the majority of what I do is low-tech tanks where it's self-filtering. I mean, obviously, you might need a heater depending on the fish. Like, if you have rams, you're going to need a heater. Uh... But it's all just sort of, it runs itself. And so in a lot of Facebook groups, or at least the ones that I'm in, everybody, pretty much everybody has a high-tech tank. Like, I saw a post yesterday about this dude who had this completely planted tank. It had lights. It probably had a heater that we just couldn't see, if I had to guess. And he said it's a no-maintenance eco system or something and all of the reactions like you know Facebook has the likes and the wows and the hearts there were a good majority of wows and I was like that's so interesting because for me that's like the only thing that I know and all these other people don't and so all of the new people in the groups or all of the moderators will tell you to sterilize everything anytime like you get algae, I think uh, cyanobacteria, which is known as blue-green algae, they tell you, like, take everything that's infected out of the tank and sterilize it or throw it away. For me, it's all over my floating plants, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do about that. I'm, I'm trying, but they say to sterilize everything, and all that does is get rid of all of the good bacteria that you had on that surface. So if you take out, let, let's say that rock in the corner, if you take out that rock that has been in a cycled tank, you're removing all of that bacteria that was helping you cycle the tank. Like, it, like at a bio, biological level. Yeah. So by like scrubbing it with vinegar or bleach or soap. Never use soap. God, never use soap in anything that goes in your tank because you'll kill all your fish. But anytime you do that, it removes all of that. And then it'll either crash your system or it'll be bad for the fish or <clears throat> something will happen. You'll have a spike of something, an algae growth, something, because you no longer have that surface area that, let's say, maybe you overfed five days a week on accident. You didn't realize you were. Well, the reason you didn't realize that was because that bacteria was taking care of that for you. That bacteria that was on the rock that yeah. you now took out. So, let's say it's the next week, the week after <clears throat> you've cleaned the rock, and you're overfeeding again accidentally uh... five days in a row. Now you're going to have an algae bloom or you're going to have an ammonia spike or something's going to happen because all of that surface area was removed. And what a lot of people think is that that 
good bacteria is in the water. It's not. It's on surfaces. Mm. So your glass surface, your rock surfaces, your gravel, your substrate, anything in the tank is where that good bacteria is. So mm. it, in a sense, it can be in the water in just the fact that, you know, maybe there's nitrites in it. Maybe there's yeah. tannins or something. So in the sense of... I know people say take something from an already cycled tank to put it in a new tank and that'll help cycle it faster. Well, yeah, that's the case, but I just watched a video by Aquarium Co-op from years ago. Go follow them, by the way. They're great. Um, or subscribe to them, I guess. He was talking about how back in the day they used to think that um, that aged water was like a gold mine. Well, the science behind that now is that it has all of the the bad bacteria in it that you're taking from that one tank, so maybe you have some nitrites that aren't fully processed into nitrates yet, mm. which are very <clears throat> different. The two are very different. And you're taking some of that water that's got those chemicals in it, and you're putting it in your new tank that's completely sterile, it's completely clean because you've rinsed the gravel, you've maybe scrubbed the glass, you've checked for leaks, you've done all that. So you're taking that and you're putting it in there. So now you've got this bacteria that's sort of cycled but not all the way cycled yet. So that'll help launch your bacteria colony growth, which is why some people choose to buy, like, bacteria starters, mm -hmm. which are good, but I also don't know how long of a shelf life they have once you open them, just yeah. because, like, how long can bacteria survive without being fed? Right. So so what, what we did, which I remember initially your reaction was pretty, like, oh, my God, Mom. Like, everything in that tank – there's rocks from the yard. The oh, driftwood yeah. is from the river. Like, I didn't sterilize any of that. Yeah, we just... Some of the rocks I dug up I dug up out of the yard, and so the bottom half was covered in dirt. I just took a toothbrush to it. I didn't boil it or anything. I don't even know the whole non-boiling versus boiling thing. I don't... But initially, we you did... You heated... You cooked your soil... Oh, yeah. Well, the only reason I did that was because the, the YouTuber, that's what he did, and the reason he did that was so that way he could grind the soil down to, like, a finer powder. It wasn't for oh, sterilization. sterilization purposes. It was so that way it was more condensed. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. I totally thought it was for sterilization. No, no, no. And it's okay. also to get rid of, like, bigger chunks of yeah. debris. Yeah. Yep, it, so. like the pine bark and stuff yeah. that's sometimes in there. Um, it's it's in uh, potting soil prolifically for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, which we used for that tank and my twenty nine gallon. Yeah, and it did have some floating things like yeah. vermis. I forgot what it's called, yeah. but it's what in like that house plant. It's the stuff that makes it. The soil not compact together. It's like um, additives that. Oh, that makes sense. So that way it doesn't go anaerobic. Or so I guess. The, the roots Would the can roots grow. can still breathe or whatever. Yeah. Oh, that That's the difference sense. between using. Well, I just saw like a guy talk about not using potting soil versus using something not labeled as. I think he said topsoil, I guess. Anyway, whatever. So, um, we do the Wallstead method mm -hmm. mostly. Yeah. Pretty exclusively. Yeah. And what, and what, just to, in summary, like what you're seeing and certainly what I'm seeing in these planted tank mm -hmm. communities is that they're not, yeah. like they're high tech. So just yeah. because they're planted tanks doesn't mean that. Does not mean they're high tech. Like a lot or of. Doesn't mean that they're low tech yeah yeah <clears throat> a lot of or a channel that i watch she is semi well known but what she does is she has planted tanks right and she has the soil so that way the plants grow but 
what she does is when her fish get sick, she goes in and sterilizes everything. You're not supposed to do that. That's a high-tech tank because this is probably a very, very, very unpopular opinion since I really don't know what I'm doing, but I... Oh, don't say that. <laughs> okay, well, I was... A way to cure fin rot and ick are with aquarium salts. I use Epsom salt. And Epsom salt is high in... I think it's manganese or manganese. It's one of the two. They're like... Yeah, the same thing in my mind. <laughs> Magnesium. Magnesium, yeah. And so it's high in that and it's high in something else. And so plants love that. So it's like a fertilizer to them. So what I do is in order to prevent my fish from getting any diseases, at least once a week, maybe every two weeks, when I'm, you know, just refilling up the tank because... Uh, it's evaporated. Yeah, because we have open lids. Yeah. We, we don't have lids on our tanks. Because of the pothos. Um, I'll just That's the take... the on top. Like, I use a apple juice bottle. I think it's 16 ounces, something like that. Uh-huh. So, I just fill it up with water in my bathroom sink, and I'll just take a little... I'll take the lid off and scoop up some Epsom salt and just pour like half the lid in. Yeah. And then shake it up. Yeah, mix it all together and just pour it in my tank. So actually, I think that you've probably come to this conclusion about aquarium keeping actually because of our family and the way that we practice medicine here. Oh, yeah, probably. So the the drawback with you know, there's a place for antibiotics. So I think in in our situation, I would say that antibiotics equals sterilization when it comes to tanking. Yeah. So it, obviously, if you have, you know, C. diff and, you know, you're dying from it or you have a staph infection and it's like, you know, taking over your entire leg, mm -hmm. you've got to get that under control. Yeah. But... When you take an antibiotic, it gets rid of not just the bad, but also the good bacteria. And then you're left with a terrible yeast infection if you're a woman. That's um, why I don't use hand sanitizer. Yeah, so same thing, because we actually do have good bacteria living on our body. Mm -hmm. And um, in fact, there's more bacteria on us than there is like our own person. It's so interesting, like, we have more, gosh, uh, I need to check that stat, but <laughs> anyway, um, something like our skin harbors more bacteria than, like, the skin cells or something. Mm -hmm. Like, the bacteria out outnumbers our cells that by a lot. Because there's, like, 20,000 bacteria in your mouth. Yeah. Like that. So like um, when we get sick, we don't run to the doctor at all. Oh, no. Like we take some probiotics and we use some um, holistic, mm -hmm. you know, plant based type of medicine to put our body back into a healthy state or help encourage it. Yeah. Um, and so the same thing with aquarium tanking. <laughs> Yeah. With Aquarian that keeping. That was sort of like a real long, and then you finally came back. So, in easier terms, I think what she means is, again, don't sterilize everything because that gets rid of all your good bacteria. But another thing that I see on my Facebook group is when anybody's fish is sick, it doesn't matter what it is, they're all like, oh, use Paraflix or Paraffin or I don't really know medicines, I'm just using some of the ones that I remember, or uh, malachite green or something like that, and they say put it in a quarantine tank or just dose it into your normal water, just make sure it's, like, plant safe or it's safe for your other fish, and then, like, do a 50% water change or a 100% water change to get rid of it from the water, or what I don't see, but what you can also do is you can put um, some pure carbon into your filter for like a week and it'll remove all of that. So I don't, I don't, I don't know if, 
if like my fish had something that couldn't be cured by Epsom salt, like, I don't know, worms, which, who knows, maybe that could be cured. I, I don't know. It Actually, it happened to me yet. Yeah, I just saw that for shrimp, you do a salt bath. Oh. And that, that gets rid of the parasites. Well, then, I I don't know. But, I mean... But Epsom salt is, like, a naturally occurring yeah, substance. Yeah, I mean, like, the Red Sea or the Dead Sea, I think it's the Dead Sea, the one that's, like, you can float it's, without even Yeah, floating. that's the Dead Sea. Yeah. The reason... Well, it's full of Epsom salt. That's the salt that makes it super salty. And so people have said that, oh, my skin was, like, really healthy afterwards. Why? Because it's full of naturally occurring. Yeah, and the the thing that you said, the mag oh. magnesium. Yeah, yeah, it's full of that, which is really good for your body. Which is why yeah. <clears throat> there are, or which is why, like when I take a bath, which is rare because I take showers, I'll take some Epsom salt in my hands and just yeah. rub it like a like a hand scrub. And then it just dissolves on my hand. Or it's almost whatever. like we do holistic tank keeping. And and that is a very uh, unique yeah. perspective in the aquarium industry. Yes. And we're kind of a unique family anyway in the way that we manage our health. Yeah. So it kind of makes sense that we would also be unique. Yeah. That we would have a very different perspective in terms of <clears throat> working with the biodiversity rather than um, excluding it. So, like, when one of us gets sick in the family. Everybody else gets sick, and it's just, it just happens. Yeah, like, we don't isolate the individual. We, like, yeah. all get it so that we can be done with it. Yeah. And we have improved immune systems because of it. It's like when one kid throws up, it's not, oh, no, am I safe? It's, oh, no. When am I going to get it? It's only a matter of time. Yes. So everybody gets buckets by their beds. Yes. Oh, my gosh. When you guys were kids, it was hilarious. It was so bad. <laughs> you would sleep with buckets for like a week because I knew. <laughs> I knew. It was going to happen. going to be puking tonight. Who's yeah. it going to be? Yeah. So, anyway, you know, we, we can't run from these things that mm -hmm. are – sickness happens. and Yeah. And fungus happens and parasites happen. Mm -hmm. And so it's best to get on board with the assumption that things will happen. And how can we take care of it in a way so that we don't destroy everything else that's been there? Yeah. So um, it's about balance, maybe. I actually want to do an experiment. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet, but I'm sort of wondering... I do not have CO2 in any of my tanks. I've thought about it, like DIY CO2, because I can't afford, you know, great CO2. Well, you're choosing things. not to spend your money invested in that way. Yeah. Not that you can't afford it. You're just investing your dollars in other places. Sure. <laughs> so what I noticed was I recently changed my light pattern a few days ago just because I got a new light, and then I had an algae bloom, and so I was sort of wondering if that was due to the extra um, blackout period that I put in. So I got rid of that blackout period on my beta tank and not my 29-gallon. So I noticed that I put Epsom salt in yesterday in only one of the bottles, that only one of the apple juice bottles that I used. Because I think I refilled it, like, with three or four, probably three different apple juice bottles. Ooh. I really should not have waited. Yeah, that was that, low. That was, that was bad on my part. Um, but I, I waited, and so two of the apple juice bottles were just normal water from mm -hmm. my tap. And then the Because we one, have well water. Yeah, and then the third one... I just put some Epsom salt in, so it was already diluted enough in the water that I was putting it in, and it was diluted in the fact that, you know, we had the rest of all of that water that was already in there to help dilute it further. And then 
I noticed that my plants were purling, mm. which I hadn't seen in a few days, mostly because I was other places and so I wasn't like really extensively observing my tank like I was yesterday, but I noticed that my um, peace lily was purling and my Amazon sword was purling, which I thought was really weird. It just had one little bubble that would go boop, boop. And I was like, huh. So I wanna do an experiment where two plants have uh, same daylight hours, but one gets Epsom salt and one doesn't. And I wanna see how that affects purling. Interesting. Yeah. That Let's do that experiment. Yeah. I don't know how we'll do it, but... All right. My phone's dying. Okay. See ya. <laughs>